I'm Sean Haney with RealAgriculture.com and Real Ag Radio. In the pulse growing regions of Montana and North Dakota, there's a crisis brewing in a crop that provides immense value to farmers and the region at large. I visited the farm of Blake Rasmussen of Plentywood, Montana to take a deeper look. Unfortunately though, Blake isn't alone in this. He's one of the many growers in the Sheridan County area dealing with a devastating disease issue that's affecting lentil growers. It's called the Phenomyces. In this video, Blake is joined by Pro Co-op Ag Center agronomist Jeannie Root. They'll explain the history of how the area got into this situation and the size and the scope of the impact, not only on Blake's farm, but the community as well. So here in Northeast Montana has um, historically been a big Durham producing area. Uh, that was kind of been our, our go-to. Um, and in the last 20 years, since pulses have been introduced, um, they've really become the economic driver. They've been a great rotation. We've grown way much better Durham because of it. And so a lot, lot of peas and lentils, uh, some chickpeas in that realm. And it's, um, it's been a mainstay in our rotation. Up to, up to half of our rotation is in the pulse category. Prior to pulse production, this was a lot of crop fallow country. So wheat and then fallow. Um, as we, we were 100% zero disturbance no-till. And so having that every year crop has made that zero disturbance possible for us. It's made it a lot more profitable and it's in our community, changed the economics of our community. I mean, this has made it possible to still have a profitable and a viable small community up here. So going back to the early 90s when we first saw the lentils and peas come into the area and had some tremendous yields, you know, the root rot was not even thought of, heard of. Um, and, and guys push the rotation and what we thought was sustainable in that kind of a derm, lentils, derm, peas, derm, lentils, um, throw a chickpea in there, uh, we're finding out is maybe uh, not long-term sustainable. Um, and we've been told by wetter areas that it wasn't going to be long term. Like the North Dakota and Saskatchewan, <laughs> yeah, they were right, like, we're. you guys can't do that. You can't do that. But at the time it was working and nobody's yes. going to walk away from their cash crop because someone says it might not work in five years. Like, Absolutely. no, it's working right now. And at the time these were really low input. Like maybe you didn't even fertilize them. You sprayed the grass weeds out, which is the cheapest operation we do. So super low input. You're basically using ground that would have been fallow. So it was a good rotation, but... I think we've kind of become stagnant and taking it for granted. And um, and so then in spots, I can't say every place is a disaster, but when we get the right conditions, we've kind of built up that inoculum. And, and here we are today with, with that, a disaster on our hands um, where we've, we're looking at replant, we're looking at following some acres to do something. If you go south and west of here 40 miles that's probably the furthest away call that i personally have received and i know the other agronomists in our other locations like further west are getting phone calls too but it's definitely here the worst and it goes clear to the state line um, so there's a 50 mile sheridan and daniels county 70 mile stretch and the data is very clear that even four years apart is probably not going to get us out of this disease cycle and then if you throw a wet year in like now your inoculum is that much higher so you're saying we're taking our most valuable crop <laughs> on our best dirt and you're saying we can't do that anymore and it, it hits home. That, that is what's happening at the end of the day. Okay, so the root disease complex that we're dealing with, um, those two are the big ones, Fusarium and Aphanomyces. Aphanomyces prefers a wetter soil. Fusarium pretty much grows anywhere, but it likes an injured plant. So the, the years that this has gotten worse, like 2016 was a wet year, that gives that wet, saturated soil opportunity. The Aphanomyces gets pretty aggressive. Until this year, we actually hadn't found much Aphanomyces in the plants because by the time they died, it was July, the Aphanomyces is long dead and you've got this horrible fusarium problem. But we started to suspect that that fusarium wasn't the whole story. We've been working with MSU on improving how we do our soil, our, our sample collection so that we're getting better samples. And this year, everything showed up earlier and we were able to finally probably isolate Aphanomyces in lentils in the field but that's because we started a lot earlier. So maybe talk about the history of where we're at today in this spring. Um, we got into the field a little late. We had snow, snow on the ground all winter. Um, we were finally able to get in the field May 1st and so these lentils were some of the first things we seeded. We talked about wanting to get them in early. Typically we would have been in 10 days to two weeks earlier than that. Um, so May 1st we're out here and the soil was in pretty good shape. Um, maybe a little bit on the wet side. We had plenty of sub moisture. 
uh, got them seeded, fairly dry, had a little rain a week later. Um, and then we come to the time period from May 25th to June 1st, and nine out of 10 days we had rain, and we had one rain event over two inches in a short time frame. Um, we saw four and a half inches of rain during that time frame, and, and about four or five days later, uh, the symptom showed up. Because it went from being a pretty nice lentil stand, a pretty, I mean, it really started off looking fine. That was three weeks after planting. They were rowed, they were established really nice. And then in a period of like five days, a huge portion of this field turned yellow and just looked like it was gonna die that night. And from the air, looking at it from the airplane, this field was 60% affected it, to the point of complete loss. We, this field, we will probably see 50% of the bushels that we would expect. So what could have been $800 an acre worth of lentils, you know, some of those acres will be zero. I mean, we're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars just in this field alone. You know, that 10 day period of a little bit of rain every day and wow, it just blew up. They told us it's going to, the Canadian, you know, the Canadians have been warning us about this for years and, and here we are. As you can see, the impact of aphinomyces is dramatic. In part two of this series, we're gonna look at what needs to happen for there to be viability for lentils in the future in North Dakota and Montana. For more resources, please visit pulsecropsipm.org. This work was supported by the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture Crop Protection and Pest Management Program through the North Central IPM Center.